Have you ever wondered about the effects of shaving your area? Before we dive into that, let's uncover some psychological facts that everyone should know. Startling signs your partner is possessive. Possessiveness is often mistakenly seen as attractive or desirable, but it can have the opposite effect. When jealousy arises, your partner may become overly negative and even off-putting, especially when boundaries are crossed. Possessiveness often indicates control, manipulation, and deep insecurity. If this behavior persists in a relationship, it can escalate into emotional abuse. Here are some clear signs that your partner may be overly possessive. 1. Texting non-stop. Your partner doesn't just text you once or twice, they bombard you with messages and calls, constantly asking about your whereabouts. Their lack of trust in where you are and what you're doing is a troubling sign. Failing to respect your boundaries by incessantly texting is an unhealthy behavior. 2. Getting upset when you meet people. They might throw a tantrum when you go out to meet your friends, feeling left out and equating it with abandonment. This deep-seated insecurity becomes problematic when you need space and time with others in your life. 3. Having unrealistic expectations. Your partner might expect you to answer their call immediately or arrive home precisely on time. They won't give you any leeway because they're overly concerned about where you are and who you're spending time with. This level of possessiveness is extremely unhealthy. 4. Being an obstacle in your goal path. A possessive partner might try to hinder your progress by demanding that you focus more on the relationship. They can't stand the idea of you moving abroad or dedicating too much time to your job. In contrast, a healthy partner will always encourage you to become the best version of yourself. 5. Getting upset when you want space. You feel uneasy discussing the need for space with your partner because they make you feel guilty for wanting some time alone in the relationship. However, maintaining individuality is essential. Needing space is completely normal and not something you should feel bad about. Your partner may even avoid making their own plans, choosing instead to cling to you constantly. 6. Caring about what you do or wear. Your partner won't miss an opportunity to dictate what you should or shouldn't wear. They'll criticize your choices, making you feel bad about yourself, reflecting how judgmental they are. They might even discourage you from pursuing your favorite activities simply because they don't align with their preferences. Dating advice for all single moms out there. Moving forward in life can be incredibly challenging when you have a difficult past. Dating can offer a path toward embracing new opportunities and experiences. Meeting and getting to know new people can be therapeutic. Single moms, in particular, often feel hesitant about re-entering the dating scene. They may feel insecure about starting a new relationship, whether due to the trauma of an unfaithful partner or the loss of a spouse. To help these moms take one step at a time, here is some dating advice specifically for single moms. 1. Don't feel ashamed. The most crucial thing for a single mom is to embrace self-acceptance. Recognize that you have your own desires and a life beyond motherhood. Be strong enough to resist societal pressures and never feel ashamed of your life choices. 2. Talk to your children. If your child is older, it's important to have an open conversation with them about your decision to start dating again. They'll likely be understanding and quick to accept your choice. Reassure your child that your time together won't change and things will remain as they were before. 3. Take dating seriously. If you want to start dating, you need to be prepared to invest both time and effort into it. Simply deciding to date isn't enough. You must actively commit your time to the process. Finding the right partner requires dedication to building a strong and healthy relationship. 4. Don't lie. Honesty is crucial for nurturing a relationship. It's important not to conceal the fact that you have children 
or the nature of your relationship with their father. Your partner has the right to know these details because they affect the child. Building a relationship based on deception is unfair and wrong. 5. Don't waste time with undeserving guys. Initially, a casual relationship might seem appealing, but over time, you may find yourself seeking something deeper and more meaningful. Therefore, avoid pursuing men who are only interested in casual connections. Instead, focus on finding a relationship that could lead to a solid, committed marriage, both for the sake of your child and yourself. Stay true to this goal and work towards finding a dedicated and serious partner. 6. Don't scare them. If you've been dating someone and have had a few dates, it's wise to avoid introducing them to your children too soon. Meeting your kids early on could jeopardize the potential of your relationship. Additionally, your children might feel vulnerable due to the situation. It's best to avoid exposing them to another difficult experience until you're certain about the relationship's future. 7. Explore the person you are dating. Life has granted you a second chance at love, and you'll want to make it count. Before considering a long-term future together, it's important to thoroughly understand the person you're dating. Get to know them fully before integrating them into your life. Avoid comparisons and view them as a unique individual who could potentially be your lifelong partner. Tips for getting out of the friend zone. Friendships are truly special, but complications arise when you fall in love with a friend who doesn't see you as anything more than a friend. It can be disheartening if you're stuck in the friend zone, and you might feel that trying to change their perspective is your only option. While moving out of the friend zone can be challenging, it's not entirely impossible. There are various strategies you can use to capture your friend's attention and explore a potential romantic connection. Here are some tips to help you move beyond the friend zone. 1. Don't appear to be needy. To move out of the friend zone, avoid being overly clingy. If you're the one initiating every conversation, they might begin to take you for granted. Instead, refrain from acting desperate and give them space to reveal their feelings for you naturally. 2. Distance yourself. It can be quite uncomfortable if you confess your feelings to a friend and they're not interested in pursuing the relationship. It's important to recognize that their response is their choice. To avoid further awkwardness, it's best to give them some space and distance yourself. 3. Get back to dating. This might seem a bit unconventional at first, but it's worth trying to help you move out of the friend zone. Show the other person that you're actively moving on with your life. They might come to realize their feelings for you, or you could find a better connection with someone else. Either way, it's a win-win situation. 4. Try to make them feel jealous. Jealousy can reveal someone's true feelings. You might consider mentioning your recent dates to see how your friend reacts and how they feel about the idea of you being with someone else. Their response could give you insight into whether they have romantic feelings for you. 5. Act busy. One of the biggest mistakes is placing your romantic interest in a friend above your own needs. This can lead to being taken for granted and remaining stuck in the friend zone. To move beyond this phase, it's crucial to establish clear boundaries and treat that friend like anyone else. Shift your focus to more fulfilling aspects of life. 6. Respect their choices. It's crucial to respect the other person's decision. If they choose to be with someone else, honor that choice. Be a genuine friend rather than undermining their relationship for your own gain. Such tactics are unlikely to succeed and can ultimately damage your friendship. 7. Stop overthinking. Stop overthinking and viewing yourself as a victim in this situation. Understand that, while it's difficult, it's not your friend's fault that they don't have feelings for you. Avoid becoming a hopeless romantic who is perpetually sad. Moving on is the most practical step to appreciating life as it is. Here are the facts you've been waiting for. 
Shaving your area increases your chances of spreading an STI. Shaving your pubic hair can increase your risk of sexually transmitted infections, STIs, by creating small cuts or tears in the skin that can allow bacteria and viruses to enter your body. These cuts can also increase friction and skin-to-skin -skin contact, which can lead to the transmission of infections. Some STIs that have been associated with pubic hair grooming include human papillomavirus, HPV, herpes, syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea. Other research suggests that pubic hair grooming may also increase the risk of vulva cancer in women and recurrent UTIs in women who groom excessively. To reduce the risk of infection, you can try these tips. Trim long hairs with scissors before shaving. Use shaving cream or gel to soften the hair. Soak a towel in warm water and hold it on the area you're shaving. Exfoliate before shaving with a scrub, washcloth, or loofah. Shave in the direction of hair growth. Don't shave over cuts, sores, wounds, or rashes. Replace your razor often. If you agree with these points, type yes in the comments and let me know your favorite part of this video. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss any new videos. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comment section down below, and feel free to stay and enjoy it until the end. Also make sure to check out our next highlighted video, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.